Welcome to today's video. In this documentary, we are going to learn about the community and the lifestyle of van life and what this means to a community. Learning about their experiences, who they are, what they drive, what the community means to them and more. Today we travel down to Newbury Showground for the Van Life and Overlander Celebration Show with some famous YouTubers. Let's meet them. Hi, my name's Adam. I run a YouTube channel called Shades My Tour, or you can find me as Adam Shades. Hi, my name's Rian and I'm the better half of what's occurring. The other half is Di and he's in the shower at the moment. So this is my other half, this is Di, this is no, David. this is the better half. No, I'm the better yeah. half. And Dave, call me Di. <laughs> Uh, my YouTube channel is Happy Travels. So my name is Adam and my channel is called Ads Ventures. My name is Juicy and my channel is Juicy May. I got into van life in 2019. We decided to hire a camper van and tour the UK and we fell in love with it. And when we got home, we decided that we wanted to uh, buy a camper van so we could uh, we can carry on traveling and looked into the cost involved of of buying one uh, which was astronomical ridiculous money um, and I wasn't prepared to put that sort of money into a, a pre-built camper van and have it sitting on my drive from one month to the next um, unused so I started looking on YouTube and saw lots of people were buying vans and converting them and that's exactly what I did. I had um, some time to spare and uh, bought the, uh, the Sprinter, it was a white panelled Sprinter van and converted it into what, what we've got today. Why do we get into van life? Uh, it is a bit of a long story. We went to Cape Verde, we'd always gone on holidays like um, package holidays, all inclusive, that type of stuff. And we went to Cape Verde about five years ago and met some friends and they had a motor home but they'd started off with a family with a tent and a caravan etc. So I went out one day when I came home and went out shopping with uh, David's daughter and I came home and I'd uh, purchased a caravan. So to be honest with you all my life I've been around it, my parents have got camper van, we had caravan before that, trailer tent, so I've always enjoyed it. Um, got to a point where I'd had all my fun when I was younger, going out, partying, and I just wanted to have a bit of freedom, to be fair. Personally, I it was all a little bit of a coincidence. I mean, I bought a van in lockdown to do it up and sell it, and then halfway through, I just realised that I loved the van. So I took it out on one trip before I was going to sell it and film that trip. And because I thought I could make the channel out of it, I just decided to keep the van and fell in love with it. And a year and a half later or so, here we are. I've always been into camping. I've been doing it since I was younger. My parents have always had camper vans. So as soon as I was old enough to drop by my own camper van, I bought myself a camper van, which was my T4. Realised that was just a little bit too small for the adventures I wanted to do, which is why I'm now a crafter. Okay, the one we've got now, we've had, let me backtrack a little bit. We've had, after the caravan, we had it for six weeks and we hated it because David hated towing. Then we had a chasse on. Then we had, no, we had a, um, a sun dance. And do you know when you have motor homes and the layout of everything is not quite right and it was very much like that. So it was, it was our third motor home that we had, the Contiki, and we loved the space of it. We've always had second hand. Um, we were going to buy a brand new A class last year. However, we went to Shepton Mallet and we seen this, and a friend of ours turned around and said, Oh, did you buy that new van after? And we said, No, we're going to stick with the Contiki. The only time we'd change is if there was a con uh, Concorde that was in our price range. And he just walked past and he said, There's one here. So it was 60,000, we were given a good deal at the show with our previous one. It's 17 years old, <coughs> excuse me, it's got 44,000 miles on the clock. So the van was 10 and the build was around 2,000, but I had quite a few freebies and cheaper things. Obviously, like I said, my dad's got a van, he upgraded his fridge, so I had his old one. So I've done it on a budget, but made it work. Um, this van is still mid-build, so that's a bit harder to judge. My first van, 
I think it cost me about seven grand for the van. And by the time it was done, it was about 12 grand total. So another five on top. This one, I think about 11 and a half grand for the van. And the build, I mean, I'm in a fortunate situation where I get a lot of stuff given to me in exchange for promotion. So I haven't had to pay for all of the amount, but the build is going to be quite an expensive one, I think. 15 20 grand on top of the 11 or so um, so yeah this one I've, I've got a lot of nice stuff going into it but I'm not claiming to have uh, yeah I've gone to the shop and bought it all myself <laughs> so I bought my van this crafter for about 7,000 I think it was and it's only a temporary conversion for now but I think I've spent less than a thousand so far which was mainly just the insulation and stuff that was on that I've never had any bad experiences, um, uh, had lots of good. Um, I, I love it, I love the atmosphere, I love the people that, that I've met. Um, there's everybody so friendly, no, no bad experiences at all. I can't say that there's anything been negative. Um, it, sometimes things get a little bit clicky. Um, but in general, I have met friends through YouTubing and especially YouTubing and going to these festivals and things that have been positive because I think the likes of, you know, my dad and, and other people, YouTubers, that I'll have fr be friends with for life. So there's nothing really negative. To be honest with you, nothing bad yet. All good. Uh, yeah, all good. Um, I've got plenty of good experiences. Uh, bad experiences, not really. I mean, the good thing is about when you, separate from just van life on its own, but when you are a YouTuber and you have a bad experience, it becomes a good experience because it is something you can feel. So, I mean, things like being stuck in a field in France um, and not being able to get the van out, that could be considered a bad experience, but for me, it made good content. Uh, but no, nothing major anyway. I mean, yeah, it's, it's all been good. So, as soon as I'm out in my van, it's a good experience, whether it's necessarily not necessarily good or bad, I don't see it as good or bad. Um, I enjoy every moment that I'm out in my van and I know that whatever I'm doing is an adventure. Um, bad, probably when I was in Portugal, um, somebody shone their torch through my windows and was speaking Portuguese and it wasn't bad, but it scared, scared me. But from coming out of that, it's turned to a good experience because it's built a lot of strength within me to then continue doing what I am doing. Um, I would say again, adventuring, being out in my camper van is, is what I enjoy. So, you know, there is a lot of good and I don't really take much as, as a bad as such. Um, so I wouldn't really say I've ever had a bad adventure. It's just something that I wouldn't do again. You know, you'd learn from, maybe I won't do that again, but I don't actually have any examples. Okay, so, my best adventure, probably, well, my best adventure and my worst adventure all came at once, actually, <laughs> I'd say. Um, we went to the Lake District uh, a couple of weekends back and um, it was a bit iffy weather. We had a great time while we were on the campsite. Uh, I was with there with a, with a few friends and uh, we decided to climb uh, Scarfell Pike. And, uh, halfway up it started to rain and the wind was blowing and we got five minutes from the top and I think I actually had mild hypothermia it was that bad so there's your worst experience <laughs> so many good ones I think our worst one was when we had the sun dance the, f the first motorhome after the caravan um, things weren't great uh, in our personal life at that time and we decided, it was the middle of winter, we decided to go up the valleys. Now, if you know the valleys in Wales, it's not the best idea to go up there, especially when it's forecasting snow. So we went up there, we got stuck, or we were along the road and it was swaying and everything. So we came back down the valley and we went to this pub uh, for a pub stopover instead. Snow had stopped and we, it was a lane. We could, see, we could see the building, it was a huge building, huge car park. So we had the Sundance has got like the hub that you can sleep on top. So there was a car coming the other way. If we were in a car, it would have been fine, but we swerved to one side to let the car go past. 
With that, a big branch went through the hub of the motorhome. So I think that was our worst experience, but I think that's just through experience that we'd never do something like that again. Worst one, easy, very easy. I parked under a motorway bridge for the night and had to move on because I could not sleep whatsoever. Very noisy, tractors are going past at two o'clock in the morning. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. Best is a very difficult one. Probably, to be honest, probably one of the, one of the events like this. Uh, good, good community and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Best, it might have even been the one that I went on with Josie recently. Uh, we went to Wales to find a lost toy sheep that belonged to my niece. Um, it was just fun and it seemed like a proper adventure rather than just going somewhere for the sake of camping for the night. But I have had a lot of good adventures so it's hard to single one out but I'd probably say that. Get rid of your house, um, stop paying bills and, uh, and, and enjoy life to, as we should be enjoying life. Um, and not be restricted to, to being at home, having a full-time job and paying your, your mortgage, your council tax and, and, and all your water rates and everything. Get away from that and, uh, and get in a van and, and start living your life properly, so yes. Definitely, I mean, we, we love it. We, we, we used to go out, we both work in full-time and we used to go out every weekend on a Saturday night. We'd go to a couple of pubs in our local area, we'd start the same pub, we'd finish at the same pub um, and see the same people sitting in the same seats all the time. Van life, it's something different every weekend. I mean, I wasn't in the slightest bit interested in it until the whole lockdown situation came along a few years ago. And like I said, that my first interest in it was just with building a van. But as soon as you go out, oh, my very first night in the van, I stayed in some dirty old car park somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And honestly, I could have never imagined enjoying that, but I woke up and I loved it. So I think from even from people that don't think that they'd enjoy it, if I was able to enjoy it, I think that the average person would absolutely love it as well. And I can't see any reason why not to recommend it really. I would recommend van life or camping or anything to anybody. I think being out in the outdoors makes you feel amazing in itself. Um, I think having the freedom to, for a camper van, you've got a bed on wheels, so there's not really many limits there. Um, and I think, for example, I the only person I knew before YouTube was ads since since being out in the camper van community. The only you, person you knew? <laughs> like here, you know. Yeah. You know, and then from being here, you end up meeting so many like-minded people, and you know, I just think everyone's very similar, and it's, it's. I think it's great. We've got a porcelain toilet, and we haven't got a cassette. I think. Yeah, we've got a porcelain throne, <laughs> a flushing throne. And our bar that we've David's just done, I think that's a little bit different. Yes. I mean, it's a it's a it's a motorhome. It's not a self-build, so there's only so much that you can do to it. Um, <laughs> long list size, blue, bright blue colour. Um, I guess you could say it's quirky. Self-build as well. Uh, quite a few little things. Uh, a lot of stuff we've done. My dad's very technical with messing about. Likes to mess about with little things. So there's a few bits in it that never really seen before. I mean, probably the pigeons on my dashboard. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a bit of a pigeon theme going on. In fact, talking about the community spirit of everything, people are so decent here. I was pulled up at an event a couple of times ago and because they knew I love pigeons, I got out of my van and went somewhere to say hello to someone. When I came back, someone had put the pigeons in my van. Um, and they've been a permanent feature now, and I don't think anyone else has pigeons on their dashboard. <laughs> I don't think there's really anything different about my van, to be honest, I, other than I, my, maybe my cat. Your temporary ceiling that uh, hits me on the head. OK, yeah, I think that's probably what makes it different, because it's a temporary conversion, and I've put blankets on my ceiling rather than putting wood on the ceiling. So, yeah, that's probably what. <laughs> and also, it's supposed to be about the, up here and it's all the way down here, so... <laughs> uh, 
you're always going to get that. It doesn't matter what you do in life, um, the, 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 there's always going to be good and bad uh, things said about anything. So you just have to take it on the chin. That's, uh, that's, that's, it's irrelevant really, just uh, enjoy it, you know. To be honest with you, I can see where people come from in certain aspects. Because we're the vans that are parked up in Lay Boys. If anything's left by any, anyone, obviously it looks bad on us. I know nine times out of ten it isn't anything to do with van lifers. But yeah, it's a small minority that ruin it for everyone else. I don't know anybody in this that we know in van life community that comes to these events that we meet year after year that would do anything that would be, yeah. con you know, not not the norm to do. I think everybody respects the areas that they they go to. Uh, they're living in it full time. Um, they'll clear up after them. Um, I, I wouldn't like to meet somebody that was doesn't respect the, doesn't community, respect the community like that. And the places you go, you've got to leave there just as you find it. Yeah. Or even better. As if you didn't, as if you didn't, as if you weren't even there. Um, I mean, I've not really come across much of it myself, but then again, where I stay is always away from other people, so I don't really see it. But I know what you mean. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that leave rubbish behind, empty, you know, their tanks and all that sort of stuff. I mean, what's the point in doing it, really? You know, it's, it doesn't take much effort to put something in a bin or to go and empty a tank in the correct place, and because of the way that they're treating it, obviously that's making it bad for a lot of other people and bringing in a lot of restrictions, so sort your life out is what I'd say, really. I think because there's so many people in vans, camper vans, motorhomes, I think when you've got a collective of people in no matter what situation, no matter what it is, when one person's done something, you generalise as everybody else. So I don't think, you know, there is a lot of people that are respectful, there's people that aren't so respectful, and I think no matter what avenue of life, you're going to have good and bad in every, every single place, so I don't think... But I haven't come across it myself because, again, I, I'm respectful. If I get out and I'm on a campsite and there's litter around me, I'll pick up their litter as well because I'm leaving. If I leave, then I'm representing myself and also everybody else. Oh, it's a w great way of sharing ideas. Um, you, you, you see other people's vans and you get inspiration from, from their designs, something that you haven't even thought of yourself. Um, I've got a lot of response from my solar panel setup. Uh, lots of people come over and talk to me about that and I'm, I'm happy to share that information. And that's what these, uh, these events are for, is to meet like-minded people. Well, we can meet up with everybody that perhaps we haven't seen. I mean, there's some people here that we haven't seen f for you. Um, yeah, it's yeah, just, it's just, just getting together, catching up. Everybody enjoys it, meeting up. It's all right, even the people who are living in the vans, it's a change for them because they, rather than parking up in the middle of nowhere, they get to mix with everybody. And like yourselves, you just must enjoy just the socialising part of it all. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can see as well this weekend brings everyone together. You've had a good time? Yeah, it's sense of community there's always you never walk around and see everyone on their own there's little groups people helping each other out lots of advice yeah brilliant little community brings everyone together yeah without a doubt if i i run a i run a company so it's a bit more difficult for me um, but yes, the ultimate plan is to maybe get an overlander um, and build something bigger and potentially sell the house, sell the business and go full time. So that's, that is my intention, yes. yes. That's in a very interesting question actually because we were thinking of doing it this year, um, possibly do it next year, but yes, I mean, council tax bills and stuff like that, it's just crazy. And the, yeah. the way things are going at the moment, I think we'll be working till we're 67. We're working just to pay bills, as you find out. Yeah. Um, whereas if we sell our house and, and live in our van, plus work for two, two years, we could retire comfortably in two years. Uh, I would, but I don't think my parents would be very happy if I did that. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, to be honest with you, in the near future, I'd, 
I don't have any intentions of buying a house. I'll buy a van to live in before I buy a house, 100%. I certainly wouldn't have done it in my last van, because it was really small. This one, I'd say, would be a struggle full time. I could probably do it, but for me, if I was going to do something like that, I'd be looking at yeah, upgrading the van, and then, I don't know, I mean, I think I could, but at the same time, I kind of like having that home base, so I'm quite actually with things, so I like having all my stuff spread out and completely around me, and uh, sometimes it's a little bit different than having it. I think I could, um, it's, it's, it's a debate that I have had myself whether I could go full time or not and I think as um, a young female myself it's more the security um, and being safe which is what would maybe hold me back from doing so but after spending six weeks living out of my van in, in Europe it is doable and I think it made me realise that minimal, uh, being minimalistic is actually um, quite a nice lifestyle you know um, and I think it is doable but if I had the safety and make sure that you know everything was all good for me to be safe and, and travel then I think it's something I would consider but I think I need to learn to be a ninja first. <laughs>